key for me is legacy. And you and Ov and Paul and other senior, you, you know, you've said there's plenty of people who've been there from day dot. Those people are having families, they're getting older. You know, 20 years time, football managers should still exist. It should be as great as it is now, if not greater. Uh, football's not going anywhere, we don't think anyway. So, you know, do you, do you guys think about, well, when you're not 40, but you're in your 60s, for example, if you're still all on the planet, how's it going to work? I mean, you know, have you got like a legacy programme or leadership for the future? So SI 3.0, <laughs> which, uh, which, which happened when we moved into the Here East building in Stratford, part of the Olympic legacy. And, uh, you know, love, love the fact that we're there. We brought in, um, we brought in a COO, a guy called Matt Carroll, who I think both of us know, know pretty well. Um, and Sega had been saying to me for a few years, you know, we really need to have a succession plan. And I was like, ah, oh, don't worry, it'll all be fine. And then, then I was diagnosed with cancer and thought, hey, yeah, probably we should have a succession plan. Um, thankfully, I, I, we caught it really early. So it was, you know, a couple of, couple of minor operations and six weeks later, I'm fine. But, um, but we brought in, one of the reasons we brought Matt in is because we had no structure. Every, everyone was reporting into me, basically. <laughs> um, and it was becoming impossible. And some people at the studio were getting really, really frustrated by it. So it's like, okay, we're gonna reinvent what we're doing. We're bringing in Matt, we're gonna have a management team. So Kieran Brennan, um, who we worked with, um, we worked with when we were still with, with IDOS to do, we were one of the first games companies to take on, one of the first games developers to take on PR. And it, I, was, I was just like, but all bands have PR, so why don't we have PR? So we did that and worked with Kieran there and, and Mark is part of that guy called um, Tom Markham, um, who is a doctor of football finance and runs our biz dev. Um, became a uh, Miles Direct Reports group who then people report into the line managers, the line managers report into, into, the, into the MDR group and the MDR group reports into, into me. And um, as part of this, it was, you know, Matt looking at the structure and Mark Duffy as dev director, looking at what we needed to do on the game side. And we didn't have nearly enough people working in the studio for, for what we wanted to do. Um, and I've carried on with my role as the game director and I still run the studio and I still lead the brand, but I gave up four and a half of my nine jobs basically as, as doing that. And, and I'm giving up more as we go along. We brought in um, a guy called Johnny Venables, joined us from Microsoft, which we brought in Matt Carroll from Disney yeah. and Johnny Venables from Microsoft. Is and Johnny Venables anything to do with Terry Venables? No. Oh. Not, well, not, not that I know of. Um, it's, it's an unusual name, Venables. But we're, you know, bedroom dev team, hiring people from Microsoft and, and yeah, very Disney good. still makes me laugh. Um, so Johnny is helping us set up a design department because we've never had a design department. And my idea of having a design department when we first did SI 3.0 was having one person doing design docs um, called Seb and Stephen as a features producer, Stephen Davidson. Um, and they're just inundated with work. So we've got an ad out at the moment for our first ever senior designer in this, you know, which if anyone's watching this, and have lots of experience and like our games, please come join us. Um, we're hiring across loads of disciplines and have a speculative application as well for the people who are trying to break into the industry who might not see a job that's there for them. Um, so we're going through that process now and we moved into this space and thought this is gonna be our home for the next 10 years and we've run out of space. So even though we're all working from home at the moment, um, we're moving into a space in here east that's around double the size of where we are now and setting up an office for the future way of working yeah so we're not expecting people to be coming back into the office five days a week but we are expecting some people are going to be in three days a week and some will be in three days a month and some will be in three days a quarter so how do you have your daily stand-up meeting when different people have different working patterns 
So the new office will solve those problems um, and also takes us into, into that future. So, you know, often Paul, Paul works on the match engine and pretty much does what he wants to on the match engine. Um, Ov works on special projects as a programmer. They're not involved in running the studio anymore. That's not what they want to do. Um, so we've had to make sure that there are really good people working on the match engine team for the stuff that Paul isn't doing. Um, and because Paul might turn around tomorrow and go, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. And Ov could do the same. Um, with me, it's more likely that it would be a heart attack rather than me leaving. <laughs> um, but we've got a great structure in place now. And, you know, I know that it was a loaded question, Andy, that you wanted to, to find out about this stuff because you, you know what a nightmare I've been historically on this side of things. But it's absolutely essential. We're part of Sega, who are a great organisation to be part of. Um, they absolutely leave us alone to have creative control. All of the studios inside Sega, we're known as Pillars. Yeah. So we have our own comms team. We come up with the global marketing strategy as well as making the games. Um, and we all work together rather than against each other. With a, lot, with a lot of games publishers, when they buy studios, they pit them all against each other and everyone's fighting for budget. Like there's a total marketing pot for the year and everyone has to fight for their piece of the pie. Sega's not like that. And the studios all get on really well. I have a weekly meeting with the other studio directors where we just talk about the problems that we've got at the moment as studios and, and are asking for help from people to try and sort it. So, so we're absolutely trying to set things up for the future. We have a, a, a fiscal responsibility to take as shareholders. You know, that's a very grown up yeah. thing to have. So I have to make sure that the company is set up in a way that if me or Mark or Matt or Johnny or Ov or Paul or any of the um, any of the programmers, any of the artists in the studio, any of the people in the comms team, you know, the, the office team who keep keep things running with Alex Bell, who I know you know as well, Andy, he's been yeah. worked with us for years. Very good cricket umpire, Alex Bell. Yeah, yeah. He's um he uses that same attention to detail with his work as he's well. A great guy. Um you know, if, if any of us can't be there anymore for whatever reason, there needs to be someone that's able to step in. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're getting there. We're, we're, not, we're not where we need to be yet, but it's absolutely a key part of, of what we're doing. And I, I've made it clear, and I, I stand up in company meetings and say this, at some point, one of you is going to Julius Caesar me. Yeah. Make sure that you do that at the right time. Don't do that when you're not ready. Because That's, you know what you've just quoted there, Miles. That's the Sith rule of two that you've just quoted: <laughs> one to wield the power and one to crave it. And if the apprentice tries too early to kill the master, then the apprentice will be killed. And if the uh, apprentice, um, so the apprentice has to wait to the right time so that he knows he can kill the master and then take the crown. So. Uh, Great, I, I, great I, quote. I, I, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a rebel. So you you're, know, you're basically saying, Miles, if you're going to take a shot at the king, don't miss. Yeah, <laughs> basically, do, do it, do it at the right time, and there will be there will be a time when it happens, and it will be at, at that point. I either do the uh, do the games industry thing and become chairman or president, where uh, where I'm there as a figurehead. Um, or I'll go and do something else. Something else. I mean, it's interesting because for those that know their Japanese business culture, certainly, you know, all the Japanese companies I've worked with are, you know, they're always long term. And Japanese companies will talk 50 year plans, you know, and, and they mean it. And they mean it. And it's an interesting challenge in the day's world. But I think the one difference probably between the US slash UK culture and the Japanese business culture is, you know, they are long term. So this must play well into the Sega uh, motherboard, really. Yeah, and the, but that's always the the, the best businesses. If you, I agree. If you look at the best businesses, they've been around a long time. Yeah. You know, the, the best entertainment businesses, you look at Disney. Yeah. 
they constantly reinvent themselves. And it's something else that we talk about in the office. We actually bring up Madonna in the office quite a lot. The reason that Madonna has been so successful for so long is that she reinvents herself. She's the female David Bowie. Not, so, not, not, not got as many good songs. The, but, the lockdown yeah. reinvention probably was a little bit, uh, you know, off the wall. Yeah, there's, a point, there's a point yeah. at which, which it starts to get a bit stretchy. That kind of eye patch thing, not so sure about. But um... but we have, whilst whilst we don't necessarily reinvent the game, because no point reinventing the wheel you can improve on the wheel you can give it better grip but we're not going to rip up fm and start again because frankly we'd be stupid to do that it's 25 years worth of work in there um but we do reinvent the studio and we reinvent the comm side of things and the way that we talk to people which is so completely different now to how it was 20 years ago um yeah. and We'll continue doing that and we'll continue reinventing the studio and the way that we work and the systems that we work with because no one ever gets that completely right. Because they're learning from their errors, mistakes, failures, whatever you want to call it, whatever word suits you. Uh, I think that's that's really, really rather interesting. And I remember you saying, we'll, we'll sort of wrap up now, but I remember you saying to me not so long ago, you know, Sports Interactive is as much if not more part of the football industry than it is the video games industry.